In this presentation, we're going to have a quick look at the camera sequencer. The camera sequencer gives you tools to lay out and manage camera shots. You can start to lay out shots in Maya or by importing your own editorial files containing audio and video clip information in AAF or Final Cut Pro format. Let's go ahead and play back my animation, and you can see that I've already got some Maya cameras set up. What I want to do is use the camera sequencer to start editing these cameras together. So we really don't need to see the cameras anymore. I'm going to go ahead and hide those and bring up the camera sequencer window. And the first thing that we need to do is create a new shot. I'll frame that shot so that it fills in the same time range as my time slider. And what I want to do is make a relationship to the shot with a different camera. So right now the perspective camera is tied into it. If I right mouse click on top of the shot, I can change the mapping of the camera to any of the cameras in my scene. So for this example, we'll use the A intro. As soon as I do that, you can see the viewport's updated to represent the currently active shot and what camera's been mapped into it, in this example, A intro. Next, we want to bring in some audio so that we can use that to help us make some editing decisions. So we'll load up some sequencer audio, and we'll bring in our first WAV file. You can really clearly see that the WAV file is kind of mellow, and then the drums kick in and it gets a little more extreme. And that's really where we want to make our first edit. So we're going to drag this down in time, and I'll increase this back out so that it covers the full range of uh, my time slider. And we'll just play this back, and you can kind of see what we have going on. So right where those drums start to kick in is where we're going to make our first edit. And the way I'm going to be making the edits is I'm going to be using the split tool. So we'll just kind of get that audio waveform right on top of where we want to make our first cut. And all I have to do is right mouse click on top of a clip, or I can select the clip and then use the editing tools directly from the, time, from the toolbar. So we'll go ahead and we'll split that clip. Obviously now we have shot one and shot two that we can map a second camera into. So for this example, we'll go ahead and we'll map in our side pan camera. We'll rewind our time, and we'll play it back, and you'll see that we now have our first edit that's represented in the viewport. So obviously this, um, this side pan isn't panning. That's the first thing that we need to address here with this shot, is to go ahead and animate the camera moving across the screen. So we'll just get the guy right about there. We'll select the camera. We'll hit our S key. We'll scrub forward in time to where he kicks his leg over the hover bike. Right about there, it looks like a good spot in the audio waveform where there's going to be a nice beat to do a cut on, so we'll just kind of push this across somewhere like that. I think that, that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and we'll key that. And while I'm on this key, I might as well do my cut, so we'll split this. And if we scrub back in time here, you'll notice that I have viewport 2.0 turned on, and that's why everything looks really beautiful and anti-alias. We have these really cool normal maps and the high-quality depth map shadows. Viewport 2.0 also has the ability to do some really advanced features like screen-based ambient occlusion, motion blur, depth of field. So for this one, we want to turn on depth of field for this shot. So all I have to do is double-click on the clip, bring up the attribute editor, and then turn on depth of field for that active camera. Obviously, the focal distance is a little off, so we'll just push that in a little bit. Kind of get it to where that ship is. I might drop the f-stop down a little bit and increase the focus range a little bit. So that looks pretty good. We can go ahead and close off the attribute editor now. And we can uh, add in our third shot here. So in our third clip, we're going to go ahead and map in our camera for the micro four thirds. We continue to scrub through my time slider here. You can see that the ship kind of hovers around a little bit. The guy hops on, and then it blasts off screen. So let's get right there where that audio has got that nice big spike in it. We'll split that shot one more time. And we'll add in our fourth camera on this one, which is going to be the back door. Notice that this one's got the uh, spaceship sort of arcing over. So what I want to do is I want to add a second audio file of a jet kind of flying by to kind of give us a nice little secondary audio effect as that ship arcs by the camera there. So again, we'll just browse our sequence audio, and we'll grab the airplane fighter wave, throw that in there, just push that down ever so slightly to where it looks like that ship's sort of blasting by the camera. That looks pretty good. So the last thing that I want to do as far as editing is concerned is I want to, I want to have a little bit of a, uh, more animation happening in this ambient sound that's sort of in the beginning of this. So what we'll do is we'll just drag this out 100 frames, actually minus 100 frames. It doesn't really matter that I'm going into the negative frame range there. And we'll just go back and we'll split this clip one more time at frame zero, right mouse click on top of it, and we'll pipe in a different camera into this. We're going to do the piping slightly different this time. I'm going to bring up the playlist. So the playlist lets you quickly edit camera shot parameters. So if you have a lot of shots in your scene, say you're doing layout for a feature film and you've got 100 shots in your film, it's really nice to be able to, to use the shot playlist to make quick changes to it, quick changes of the camera mapping, any clip data, so any assets that are associated, movie files, image sequence files, things like that would show up in the clip data. So for this, we're going to just change this shot on our second clip to be the top. As soon as I do that, obviously you can see that it updates. So we'll rewind this and we'll play it back one more time.
So obviously we got these cool edits. The viewport 2.0 looks really beautiful in the scene. We've got the nice depth of field on that shot. Depth of field on this shot too, actually. Here comes the second audio clip. And then our little spaceship kind of twists off there and shoots off. So the next thing that we're going to do is look at how we can take all of these different shots that we have strung together and generate a single camera for them using the Ubercam. So the Ubercam is really great if you're trying to get out to a game engine or something like that that isn't going to understand a series of cameras. It allows you to bake all the information from the camera sequencer onto one single cam. And then again you could just export it to a game engine or an FBX file. So we'll go ahead and create that Ubercam. We'll uh, bring up our perps outline window just to highlight that Ubercam that was made. I'll turn on my translation tool so we can see where that guy actually is. Let's just rewind in time here. So there's the Ubercam. We'll turn those other cameras back on. Um, actually, and if we scale those up, it'll be a little easier to see what, what, they're, what they're doing. So we'll just scale all those cameras up. And oh, I missed one back here. We'll scale that guy up. And we'll grab that Ubercam. So as I um, bring up the channel box for that guy so that you can actually see the parameters on that Ubercam also updating, as I scrub through my time slider here, you'll see that that translation node, we'll put our translation tool on, basically just jumps around. That's the Ubercam that's basically just changing its key information to follow all those cameras that used to be individual cameras. Now we have one single camera that's basically jumping all around. And notice things like the s-stop and focal distance, all that information is also baked right in. Then obviously if we wanted to view through the Ubercam, it's just a standard perspective window inside of Maya. And you can actually uh, just scrub through this and you can see that all that information of what used to be five cameras is now transferred down onto one simple camera that we could export out again via e either via FBX or through uh, through some custom tools to get into your game engine. So that's a couple of the examples of things you can do with the camera sequencer. And um, you know, like I said before, we did it all on top of a viewport 2.0 display, so it looked really uh, really pretty slick.